Good morning, I'm John Larson, and I especially want to uh, Akeem Jeffries, uh, ranking member uh, Neil, uh, chairs of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, Asian Pacific, the Democratic uh, Party Communications Committee, New Dems, and chairs of the uh, Task Force on Aging and uh, Families. Also want to welcome our subcommittee members on Social Security as well. Uh, may you live in interesting times, as the saying goes, but uh, in the midst of what uh, historians are calling and social science are calling a polycrisis, uh, a polycrisis is the coming together of simultaneous occurrences that can result in catastrophic consequences. These are the times that everyday Americans are living in. How so? They are experiencing the effects of a global pandemic that has spawned and spurred on a global supply chain crisis, which has set off a global inflation crisis, all of which have been further compounded by the war in Ukraine. And it affects American citizens. As if these compounding crises were not uh, and worrisome enough, Republicans have also managed to manufacture a debt ceiling crisis. This is a dangerous tactic, a political stunt that has far-reaching economic consequences. This tactic of holding the economy hostage hurts seniors the most. Here's the facts, and you're all familiar with them. Of the more than 1.2 million Americans who have lost their lives in this pandemic, over 855,000 are people over the age of 65. And who is impacted the most by inflation? Well, they're people on fixed incomes. Our seniors, more than 65 million who are on Social Security. They need our help now. Democrats are here today to lay out our plan of action, which includes legislation to secure and expand Social Security. The number one anti-poverty program for the elderly, for our children, and a disability plan that more veterans rely on than the VA. That's why we're here, to implore our Republican colleagues to work with us, to sign on to our bill, or produce what they believe is a better plan. They must, for the sake of the nation, act now for people who have been most impacted. However, as all of you here know, uh, unfortunately, as we speak, Republicans are still threatening to hold the full faith and credit of the United States government hostage in return for cuts to Social Security and Medicare and other essential programs? Our bill is meant to address these concerns. Democrats are here not just to protect and preserve Social Security from cuts, but to expand it. Our bill will provide across-the-board increases for all recipients of Social Security. Our bill ensures that no senior can retire into poverty. Imagine during all of this crisis, more than five million of our fellow Americans who've worked and contributed all their lives to Social Security get a below poverty level check. Our bill also will fix WEP and GPO and make sure, as the president has called for, that we reform it because of the way it has penalized so many public servants, including teachers and firefighters and police officers. We improve the cost of living adjustment the same way that the AARP has called for it. Cut taxes for more than 23 million Social Security beneficiaries and extend the solvency of the Social Security Trust Fund. And it's paid for by following President Biden's leadership, asking the wealthy who are making over 400,000 who have been exempt to pay their fair share. 
It also closes the loophole, which allows the rich to avoid FICA taxes. And let me be clear, in the midst of this global poly crisis, this bill is also an economic engine as well. In my hometown, the people at Augie and Ray's may not know what a poly crisis is, but they know that the Social Security that people receive goes straight back to local communities and is an economic juggernaut. I want to uh, commend Senator Sanders and Warren for their work on Social Security. I want to thank Senator Blumenthal and Van Hollen for being the Senate sponsors of our bill. I also want to thank the more than 350 advocacy groups that are supporting this bill. Our seniors, veterans, orphan children, disabled are not political bargaining chips. They're people. This is about your mother and father, your brothers and sisters, your neighbors in the community. Democrats are here today to embrace what Franklin Roosevelt started when he signed Social Security into law in 1935, acknowledging at the time that this was the cornerstone, but there was much work left to do. Democrats are here today poised to take that next step, building on the essential structure by adding benefits the American people richly deserve and need. We are fortunate to have a leader that understands that, and a leader who Martin Luther King would describe as embracing and understanding the fierce urgency of now and the action that is required. My honor to introduce the Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries. Thank you, Representative Larson, for your extraordinary leadership on this critical issue on behalf of older Americans throughout the country, as well as the next generation of Americans uh, who should be able to have the benefit of a strong and robust social security program. The distinction in this area couldn't be any clearer between House Democrats and extreme MAGA Republicans. House Democrats under the leadership of John Larson want to strengthen and protect Social Security. That is what Social Security 2100 is all about. On the other hand, extreme MAGA Republicans want to end Social Security as we know it. And also, through their dangerous default gamesmanship, are placing at risk the earned Social Security benefits of millions of retirees all across the nation. Now here in this great country, we believe that the American dream is anchored in a simple approach that if you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to make a comfortable living for yourself and for your family to perhaps purchase a home, to educate your children, and certainly to retire with grace and with dignity. And that is what Social Security is all about, making sure that millions of older Americans at the end of their working career can retire with grace and with dignity and not in poverty. Social Security has been a tremendously successful program. It's an earned benefit that people pay into throughout their entire lives. So it must be protected and it must be strengthened. And that is what the Social Security 2100 legislation is all about. Now, there is nothing more American than baseball, motherhood, apple pie, and social security. And that is why we're committed to protecting and strengthening it. We're gonna stand up, we're gonna speak up, we're gonna to continue to show up. 
until we can get this important legislation over the finish line for the benefit of millions of Americans who are already retired and generations of Americans to come. And I thank you, Representative Larson, and all of these extraordinary members of Congress for their wonderful leadership on this critically important area. It's now my honor to yield uh, to the once and future distinguished chairman uh, of the House Ways and Means Committee, Richie Neal. Thanks, Mr. Leader. Thanks. Uh, I want to thank the leader because I think he encapsulated the argument that uh, we've made traditionally, as John Larson indicated, since Mr. Roosevelt signed uh, the Social Security Act. And remember, the great amendment to the Social Security Act is in 1965, which is Medicare. John Larson is a serious legislator with another serious proposal. He has once again gone back to the drawing board. He's uh, drafted a substantial piece of legislation. But, but here are the facts. The average Social Security benefits about $18,000 a year. $18,000 a year. That means half the people who receive Social Security benefits receive less than $18,000 a year. Now contrast what John's attempting to do here this morning with what Republicans are prepared to announce as soon as the debt crisis issue is resolved. And that is, as reported this morning, which we've known for a bit in the Ways and Means Committee, they intend to go forward with another tax cut proposal after making the argument here for restraint as we proceed to the debt ceiling discussions. Since 2001, these are facts, Republicans have led with $5 trillion worth of tax cuts. 201, trillion three, 203, a trillion. December 2017, borrowed $2.3 trillion for a tax cut. And for them to begrudge John Larson's legislation here, which would boost the earning power of people at the lower end, as Hakeem noted, an earned benefit, is consistent with the recklessness with which they've approached the debt ceiling argument. Now, here's what many of you should think of in terms of retirement savings. It's supposed to be a three-legged stool. Personal savings, a pension, and the bedrock guarantee of Social Security. So in the history of Social Security, it's never missed one payment to one person when you talk about efficiency. And something else I would say to the younger amongst us, you can outlive an annuity. You cannot outlive Social Security. That's the genius. In our youth, we all pull the wagon so that in our senior years, we can make sure that everybody gets to sit in the wagon. And I think that's what John's legislation here accomplishes today. This is really terrific that once again, he is starting the conversation about enhancing an average $18,000 a year benefit for Social Security recipients. Thanks, John. You're introducing. Uh, oh, who am I introducing, John? <laughs> Whoever the next person is. And introducing the uh, caucus. The head of the uh, DPCC, uh, who, by the way, is uh, a dad, new dad. Here. Yeah. Joe Nagusa, what a job he's done. If you go to these meetings to, uh, at the caucus, boy, he's able to take complicated issues and distill them so that everybody understands them. Joe Nagusa. Well, I think first and foremost, the chairman, uh, it's tough to follow the chairman of the Ways and Means and Committee uh, to talk about Social Security, but nonetheless, I'll try to do my best. And I appreciate the kind words. Our son uh, is uh, four days old, so uh, we're very, very excited uh, about... Uh, about his birth and, and welcoming him to the world and, of course, ensuring uh, that the world that he inherits is one in which he can pursue his dreams as every child in our country. And I couldn't be more proud in that vein to be here to support an important bill to strengthen Social Security for generations to come, including my son Joshua's generation, and that is the Social Security 2100 legislation championed by my good friend and a true leader, John Larson. Uh, there are a few people in the United States Congress who could bring together the Ways and Means Committee Chair, uh, the leader of the House Democratic Caucus, and the distinguished group of legislators that are behind me, leaders from the Progressive Caucus and the New Democratic Caucus, leaders from every one of our ethnic caucuses, the Black Caucus, KPAC, the Hispanic Caucus. John Larson is that leader, and he has been a champion year after year, beating the drum to make the case that we ought to take the steps necessary to strengthen Social Security. Now, of course, I know we're here to talk about his bill and an important bill that is, but it is not lost on any of us 
the undercurrent, of course, of where we find ourselves today, and that is on the brink of a default brought on by Speaker McCarthy and extreme House Republicans who are, in effect, holding our economy hostage. And we know that if a catastrophic default were to occur, again, because of the actions taken by our colleagues on the other side of the aisle, it would be catastrophic in particular for Social Security recipients in Ohio and in Colorado, in New Hampshire, from coast to coast and across our country who are using those benefits to pay their medical bills, to pay their mortgage and their rent, to pay for food. It is unconscionable that Republicans would put us in this position. It's time for them to do the right thing by the American people. And I think they could learn a thing or two about strengthening Social Security if they came on board with Chairman Larson's plan that we are rolling out today. Social Security is a guarantee between the federal government and each and every American. And when you contribute to Social Security throughout your career, you trust that you will be able to retire with pride. But as we heard from the leader, as we heard from our chairman, Social Security is under attack right now by Republicans, which it makes this legislation all the more important and timely. It is time to strengthen Social Security for years to come, and we can do that through this important legislation for all the reasons that Chairman Neal articulated. It's the right time to get this done. It is long past time to get this done. And under Chairman Larson's leadership, I have every confidence that we will get it done. So with that, it gives me great pride to introduce one of the leaders uh, of the Tri-Caucus, and that is the distinguished gentlewoman from California, senior member of the Ways and Means Committee who leads the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. She's a champion in our caucus, and in particular, as we celebrate AAPI month uh, this month, uh, we are grateful to have her leadership in the caucus, and that's Congresswoman Judy Chu. Thank you so much, Chair Nagus. Um, yes, I'm Congressmember Judy Chu, Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, or KPAC, and I want to recognize Congressmember John Larson. He is, without a doubt, the most dedicated advocate for Social Security that I've ever seen, and he will not relent until he gets Social Security 2100 passed. Thank goodness Social Security has a champion in him. Well, you know, since 1935, Social Security has been one of our country's most successful promises and programs with tens of millions of Americans relying on Social Security as their primary source of income in retirement. However, due to years of underfunding, Social Security is no longer the guarantee it should be because benefits have not kept up with the cost of living increases over the past 50 years and it unacceptable 5 million seniors currently live in poverty. Benefits will be slashed across the board if Congress does not act now, threatening every senior that relies on Social Security, particularly Americans, seniors of color, and women. This is true, certainly, for Asian Americans and Pacific Islander seniors, 45% of whom lack access to employer-sponsored retirement plans. 28% of AAPI older adults are living in poverty, including more than one out of five Korean, Bangladeshi, Burmese, Cambodian, Micronesian, and Nepalese Americans. Yet, Republicans continue to threaten a devastating default that would cause economic catastrophe and halt Social Security payments to the 66 million Americans that receive benefits. House Democrats are standing up against this extortion and for seniors on Social Security. So I am proud to join Congressmember Larson to introduce the Social Security 2100 Act to shore up this program. It will ensure that all seniors, including AAPI seniors, have stable requirements and a bright future. It increases benefits for all recipients, protects against inflation, and ensures that benefits are set above the poverty line. Social Security is a multi-generational success story, and I'm grateful to be in the fight to ensure the program is strengthened for this generation and for generations to come. And now I am pleased to turn over the podium to the 
that the Congress member from California, in fact, my neighbor, who is representing the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and talk about dads. He's chair of the Dads Caucus. That's Congress member Jimmy Gomez. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, I'm here representing the Hispanic Caucus in, in, in place of Nanette Barragon, who is the chair. She couldn't make it today, but also is a strong supporter of this important piece of legislation. Um, Social Security, it is something that we, you know, that every generation relies on. And we sometimes take it for granted. I remember when I was in, in high school back when um, Mr. Chairman Richie Neal first got to Congress, um, <laughs> that there's, <laughs> there, there, there's, always, there's always a debate, will Social Security be there for that next generation? And I always had faith that the elected officials would always come to their senses and reach an agreement. And it's been done time and time again to make sure that Social Security is there, healthy and robust. Um, but we've learned over the last several years that what we thought um, is guaranteed is no longer guaranteed on different issues. And that's why this is where we have to step up and say that this issue is extremely important and we can't let the extreme Republicans hold the country hostage when it comes to um, uh, the debt ceiling or to what impact's going to have if we default. Um, there is a saying in negotiations that if you're not willing to shoot the hostage, then you're not really negotiating. Well, the hostage in this situation are the millions of, of Americans who will suffer, right, suffer from lack of payment for a crashing economy, uh, from 401 ks going, uh, going down, it is the American people who are the hostage in the situation. It's not a piece of legislation, it's the American people. So we gotta take steps to, um, one, bring the Republicans back to their, their senses, I hope that can be done, but then also take steps to shore up this important program. In uh, 41%, about 40% of Latinos, their sole source of income in retirement is Social Security. That's including um, my mother, who, uh, who worked four or five jobs a week to make ends meet. She, she took care of seniors during the day, she worked at a convalescent home in the evening, both on, on, the, um, on the weekends and during the weekdays. And so anybody says that these seniors didn't earn their Social Security, this is the, the, the music that's supposed to get you to cry when I'm talking about my mother. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you. Um, but whoever says that they're not, they didn't earn it is full of it. These folks work their tails off, they work their hands off time and time again. So when we say about Social Security that it is a lifeline, it is. I remember I helped my mom make her first bu like real budget after she retired. It was $535 a month when she was getting from Social Security. And this was after my dad passed away. And we had to make sure that that could cover, and I wasn't even employed at the time, cover her, her um, you know, car insurance, her food, utilities. So we had to make sure that every of, uh, one of those dollars stretched as much as possible. Um, now we're in a little bit better of shape. I'm, of course, employed, and I can help out when I can. But this is something that we got to keep in mind, that there's some Americans that this is their sole source of income. So we need to make sure that we, we um, protect it, we make it uh, uh, sure that it's there for this generation, but also future generations. The 2100 um, Act is a, is a great name, but the only person that's gonna be around for the 2100 Act probably is my son Hodge and Joe Nagusa's kids. So um, we wanna make sure that it is there for that future generation. So um, to Representative um, Larson and to the individuals in this room, we're gonna fight every step of the way to make sure that um, Social Security is there for not only for my mother, but people's parents all over the country. With that, I yield to Annie Custer, uh, the new Dems chair. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Don't lose that. Oh, okay. Thank you, Congresswoman Annie Custer. I'm the chair of the New Democrat Coalition, uh, where nearly 100 of the members of our Democratic Caucus, and we support uh, the extension of Social Security. You know, as I've been listening to these stories and people's family, my mother-in-law was living on 
uh, Social Security, same story, Jimmy. She'd worked her heart out her entire life but didn't have pension. And I just remember sitting with her and trying to go through the budget, thank God for federal housing, but $1,000 a month and $12,000 a year. And as John said, you know, if 18000 is the average, then many are, are much less than that. Um, you can see the diversity of the Democratic support in our caucus for this and why it's going to make a difference. In my district, 160,000 people. And we, we're talking about uh, the default and the debt ceiling. I think it sounds very much inside the Beltway, the negotiations. Where are we? Are they at the White House? Are they back here? What's the number? What's the... I'm thinking about my constituency. I'm thinking about the Social Security beneficiaries who are the first that will miss a check and the least able to miss that check. They cannot afford uh, the life that they're living unless they get that check. They don't have savings, many of them. If you're living on $12,000 a year, um, and I think about... Uh, women of, of my generation and older who didn't have pension. Um, they worked, they worked hard, but they didn't get the wages that they deserved. They were, you know, at best 75 cents on the dollar to the male wages, and many of them far less. Uh, certainly people of color, women of color, um, the wages were far less. And they weren't in jobs that had retirement savings. They weren't in jobs that had pensions and had a union and had somebody to protect them. So we're all here to support John, who has been tenacious, uh, the definition of perseverance. Um, and I also want to just mention the children, 10,000 children in my district, 21,000 disabled workers in my district, um, and 123,000 retirees who have worked very, very hard. I don't want them to miss a check. And I want to make sure that Social Security will be here for what we're now calling the Joshua generation. Thank you. <laughs> and with that, I am going to turn it back to the committee, uh, Bill Preskell, Brian Higgins, and Dan Kildee from the Social Security Subcommittee. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm still waiting for the peace plan from the Vietnam War from these guys across the I'm still waiting for a health plan that they promised. Waiting on a lot of things. Easy to talk. John, you've been persistent. You've been a real pain in the neck. <laughs> but you've done the job. Common ground. <laughs> How many things do we start and we don't finish? So I'm thrilled to be with John and Richie, and Joe, everybody, to defend Social Security, a benefit that America workers have earned. This is not an entitlement. These birds don't know what the hell they're talking about. Today, the entire American economy is teetering on the edge of destruction by a manufactured crisis. I don't think that's hyperbole. No corner of America is safe if the Republicans blow up our economy. And that starts with Social Security. The average income in my district is 49, a little over 49,000 in my town of Patterson, New Jersey. Now you put rent together or you put mortgage together, which what you have to eat every day, and general necessities of life, it's a close call here. How about those numbers of people who live on nothing but their Social Security check? So nearly 40% of American seniors would live in poverty without Social Security. Benefits are the lifeblood for family members, children, and surviving spouses. Six million kids depend on Social Security to eat. Republicans are threatening the lives of every single one of these 66 million Americans. We will not touch Social Security. Well, remember not too many years ago what they tried, how they tried to privatize it. 
change the language a little bit. Go right back where we started from. So um, Republicans are threatening the lives of every single one of the 66 million Americans. Social Security checks could be halted if we blow up the economy. It is a fact, and it needs to be reported. Today, we lay out our roadmap to protect this great program for generations to come. John Larson's Social Security 2100 bill will do that. Today, right now, folks who work here have a gun to the head of Social Security. That's extortion. It's unfair, unjust. It's really a disgrace. We cannot let this piracy stand. And now I'd like to introduce my brother from New York State, Brian Higgins, who was with us from the very beginning. And Brian is a stand-up guy. Brian, join us. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, the member from Patterson, New Jersey, and to John Larson, who has been principled, uh, persistent, and uh, persuasive uh, in this argument. You know, cut this down to, to politics because in the end, that's what it is. Every single day in America, including today, 10,000 people will turn 65. That's 3,650,000 people every single year. And coincidentally, that is the most active voting demographic uh, in America. 70% of American debt is owned by Americans, including $3 trillion in Social Security. Why would you default on your own people? You don't want America to default, China does. Because our Republican opponents put up a resolution that said, those who get paid first will be the foreign debtors, including China. China wants America to default on its debt because American dollar is the go-to currency in the world. They want the yen to be the go-to currency in the world. This is an American first caucus that's promoting what is best for this nation. 65 million people in America now have the benefit, the security of social security. Before this was enacted, in August of 1935, by President Roosevelt, 50% of the senior population had one guarantee in life. Had one guarantee in life, and that was when they reached senior status, they would live in poverty. We are a better nation than that. And Social Security has proven that we that is a lifeblood to people who contribute to our economy. We're a $24 trillion economy, 70% of which is consumption. Can you imagine if we defaulted on our debt and destroyed the Social Security program, what that would do to the general economy? This is serious, serious stuff. It was serious when John started this several years ago. It's even more serious today and more so this week. With that, Dan Kildee from Michigan. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brian. I'll be uncharacteristically brief. <laughs> I had surgery recently, so it hurts when I talk, so it's now a shared experience for all of us. <laughs> um, look, there's a real stark uh, difference between the way we approach these issues and uh, the other side. Just imagine what's happening right now. Republicans are threatening to default and curtail the benefits, Social Security earned benefits, to hardworking Americans in order to exact from the Congress and the White House cuts that would negatively impact those very same Americans. Cuts to veterans' benefits, threatening their Social Security in order to exact cuts to a veterans' benefit, to nutrition support, to housing, to the cost of health care, all in order to facilitate continuing down this path of rewarding people at the very top of the economy. Look at the 2017 uh, tax scam and its predecessors, a policy that they're about to double down on in the coming months, weeks. I mean, this is really a stark contrast between the 
values, and the principles that we support, and what we see as a cynical use of political power in order to threaten people with the loss of essentially earned incomes, uh, uh, benefits, to exact additional cuts that affect those very same people. We take a different approach. Our approach is to fix the problem. Even without the threat to Social Security, we know it needs improvement. And this is why what Mr. Larson has proposed persistently uh, is the solution that we all believe is necessary. And that is to make good on the promise of Social Security, to improve the benefits to those living at, at or below the poverty line, and to keep the promise that was made and has been modified regularly since 1935 in order to meet the changing needs of the American economy. Social Security is a promise. It's a promise that we all pay into with the expectation it'll be there in a sufficient form in order to make sure that people can live out their lives in dignity. That's what we're here for. Just look at the approach that the other side is taking versus the approach that we take manifest by this legislation. If the American people take a close look at that, there's no doubt whatsoever which path they will choose. And I'm certainly proud to be a part of this effort. And I thank our chairman, I thank the members, and I especially thank Mr. Larson for his dogged persistence on this issue. And I will stand with him until we get this done. With that, let me now turn to the longest serving woman in the history of the United States Congress, a person who has been a part of this effort from the very beginning. And that's my fellow Midwesterner, Marcy Kaptur. Thank you, Go blue. Thank you. Go blue. There you go. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm very honored to be in the company of most of the members on our side of the aisle of the Ways and Means Committee who hold a lot of power. I'm not from that committee. So, uh, Congressman Larson, I'm just so grateful to you and to all of your colleagues on the committee, certainly to uh, former chair and ranking member and future chair, uh, Richie Neal, and all of the members of the uh, Ways and Means Committee. Um, I suppose one of the reasons I was invited today, first, our family understands what Social Security means. Uh, the granddaughter of immigrants who worked at the worst jobs, first fired, last hired. Uh, if it were not for Social Security, um, they simply could not have existed. Uh, and uh, for our parents, uh, the same. Uh, a family that benefited through Social Security, which is a compact of trust, compact of trust sacred compact of trust intergenerationally. Uh, I want to thank John Larson, Congressman Larson, for your dogged, uh, persistent efforts to move this issue forward. And I think the reason I'm here today is I'm probably the only member here who was present uh, in the Congress in April of 1983, uh, after I was first elected, in order to be a deciding vote, uh, April 1983, of the refinancing of Social Security. And the election of 1982 November uh, was uh, extremely important because this issue, the refinancing of Social Security for the first time in, in a generation, occurred. At that time, uh, the Speaker of the House was Tip O'Neill. We had a Republican president, Ronald Reagan. Uh, there had been a commission to preserve Social Security and Medicare before I became a member of Congress. And in the same way as Congressman Larson has led this effort, uh, we had a member from Florida, Claude Pepper. Uh, they called him Red Pepper. And he was a heart and soul Democrat from you know, inside out, just a great guy. And uh, we were able to move to passage Social Security. I've forgotten a lot of the votes I've probably taken in my career. I will never forget that vote. And I just felt that I had helped lift America. At that time, the country was in deep recession. Now we're facing inflation coming out of this pandemic, and we're beginning to heal that uh, through greater employment and more revenues coming into the system. And we have to keep on that course. But I currently represent hundreds of thousands of constituents who absolutely depend on Social Security as their lifeline. And with the cuts that the administration is proposing in Meals on Wheels, uh, the cuts they're proposing for veterans, uh, the cuts they're proposing to, uh, in programs that I have some jurisdiction over, to cut their utility bill assistance, it's going to make life so much more difficult if we cannot prevail. And this particular program truly is a lifeline. 
Medicare has worked, the American people are living longer, and therefore we have to replenish the trust funds to make sure that there's enough for Joe's, I guess he left, uh, for his son Joshua, and for all the young people coming up. This is something we do. It shouldn't be difficult. It should be something that is proven and helps to lift all boats. And by the way, from an economic standpoint, to pull the rug out from under Social Security would cause not only harm to individuals, but economic harm in every congressional district in this country. Because Social Security in, in our district represents billions of dollars a year in spending uh, across the economy for food, uh, for medical services, uh, for the basics of life, really, uh, paying their energy bills. Uh, these are not families that squander money. They watch every penny. And I can tell you, we need to reboot Social Security because it's become more expensive for seniors across our country to live. So I just, I'm very honored uh, to be here. We in Ohio, obviously, have a special interest in the windfall uh, elimination provision and the healing of that. That doesn't affect every single state, but it does us. And uh, this particular effort is one that truly will be, I will remember this vote of when it happens as well, just as I did in 1983. Now I have the great privilege of, of uh, introducing just an astounding member, uh, another Great Lakes member uh, from the state of Illinois and the Chicago region, Jan Schakowsky, my sister. Thank you. I'm Congresswoman Jan Chakowsky. I represent the 9th District of Illinois. So I uh, received a call, my staff did in, in, the, in the office, of a woman absolutely terrified that the Republicans were going to do something that was going to harm her Social Security disability. Jan has said she makes, she, she, she gets uh, $1,500 a, a, a month, that's it, to live on. And if she doesn't get that benefit from Social Security disability, she will not be able to pay the rent. She will not be able to get her prescription drugs or to put enough food, nutritious food, on the table. She would like to work, by the way, but because of her chronic mental illness, unfortunately. She is unable to work. This is her lifeline. This is what the Republicans are threatening right now. But even beyond that, the Republicans, by the majority, over a, about 170 of them voted to raise the age of Social Security to 70 years old. The only way to describe that it is a cut, a serious cut, in Social Security benefits. As has been made, the, the point has been made before, this is not their money. This is the earned money of people who, through every paycheck, through all their sweat equity, have accumulated some security for themselves, but not enough, as John Larson has shown us. We can do Better. This is the richest country in the world at the richest moment in history. How dare we be starting to talk, the, the Republicans talking about reducing in any way Social Security. We need to be able to take care of our people. Also, I want to say it is a family insurance plan. Two of my grandchildren, when their mother tragically died, were able to get Social Security benefits until they were 18 years old to continue with their education to make sure that my son had enough to take care of them properly. That was a benefit from their mother as part of the Social Security program. We should all, as members of Congress, feel obligated to do more to help the people uh, and to, to assure them of their benefits and to improve those benefits. Women who make a good deal less than men because of historic lower wages, and that's what 
determines what their Social Security benefit will be, will be helped by this legislation. And so it is time that we roll up our sleeves and say that this precious program that has been successful for so many decades needs to be updated now and Social Security uh, 2021 is the way that we can do it. I look forward to working with John Larson, all our friends in the in the Democratic side to make this happen. Thank you. Well, listen, uh, thank you all for uh, joining us. I would like to, and I wanted to thank uh, Chairman uh, uh, Neal again, who is also very modest. I don't think many people realize that he is a product of Social Security, having lost his mother, his father, his grandmother, who was then taking care of him, also passed. And uh, he's here today and understands Social Security thoroughly. For every member of Congress, we are producing these cards. Everyone's going to get their own Social Security card. And uh, we took as an example today to utilize uh, uh, Rich Neal, uh, the uh, as uh, I think several have said, the former and uh, uh, will be the future uh, chairman of the committee, and also uh, Jason Smith and his, uh, and shows in their districts, and break this down. And I think this is the essential point. These are not bargaining chips. These are people. These are your constituents. This is your mother and father, your brothers, sisters, aunts and uncles, the people you go to church with the people in your community. This is who depend and rely on Social Security. It is why it's America's number one insurance program. It is, it is never missed a payment. We used to have to go back to the Great Depression. You only have to go back to 2008, 2009 and the Great Recession and understand that when people's 401ks became a 101k, Social Security never missed a payment. Not a pension payment, not a spousal payment, not dependent coverage or a disability payment. You cannot purchase that. I come from an insurance capital of the world. I went to the Aetna school. They talked about the three legs on the stool that Mr. De Neal did and taught that. And the only one that's never missed a payment and is a guarantee is Social Security. That's why this is so critically important. And yes, Congress has not acted to enhance Social Security in 52 years. As Marcy pointed out, 40 years ago, it did make sure that Social Security could stay in place, but they did so also at that time, Bob Dole, God rest his soul, who was a strong advocate, convinced Ronald Reagan, a Republican president, that they should go forward and Tip O'Neill made sure that Social Security was protected, but they did it by raising the age. The Greenspan Commission, which Robert Ball, who was a participant, said, listen, that commission actually didn't work. It was actually the negotiations between people. We don't need to go behind closed doors. We need an open discussion with the American people. They know and love and appreciate Social Security for what it means to them. It's their very subsistence in their older years. And it's why, as elected members of Congress, it's our responsibility to put this forward. This is nothing the president can do with executive order or that the Supreme Court is going to adjudicate. This is what Congress was elected to do here. And it's a simple thing. If you got a better idea, if you have a better plan, if you got better legislation, bring it forward. But for God's sake, let us vote on it. Let us debate this and let us move forward. This pandemic has only underscored the absolute necessity to act now for so many of our fellow Americans. Don't just look at them as statistics or political bargaining chips. 
These are the people that make this nation what it is. That's why we feel so strongly in all aspects of our caucus. And I dare say the American people as well. And that's why there's no need to go behind closed doors. Let's have this discussion out in the open. Why? There's only two things you can do. You can either cut benefits or you can enhance the program through revenue increases. We stand here today not just to protect Social Security, but to enhance it. Richard Nixon was president the last time Social Security was enhanced. It was saved and protected 40 years ago in 1983, but it was not enhanced. A lot has changed since 1971. The cost of living alone has changed. We need to act now on behalf of those we love and who have done so much to keep this nation oh, what it is today, the greatest in the world. But it's up to this Congress to act to make sure that the people who made it great do not live in poverty, but are able to lead a life of dignity in the greatest land in the world.